there's blowback on allowing transgenders in the military. Just in time for the July 4th weekend last year, the Pentagon lifted the ban on allowing transgender personnel join our military forces per a decree from President Obama. The plan proposed by the Pentagon would direct each branch of the armed services over a one-year period to implement new policies affecting recruiting, housing and uniforms for transgender troops, one official said. The ruling gave the military one year to make it so. Flash forward to 2017. With the imminent deadline of July 1st to complete Obama's Pentagon directive, our new Secretary of Defense Mad Dog Mattis temporarily paused that decree on June 6. As senior military personnel from multiple branches of the armed forces continue to hold serious reservations. However, Defense Secretary Robert Work added. We do not intend to reconsider prior decisions unless they cause readiness problems that could lessen our ability to fight, survive and win on the battlefield. In the meantime, the U.S. Army began compulsory transgender sensitivity training for all of their civilian employees and soldiers with a 50-minute video. Reactions to the idea were swift. In June, U.S. Army Master Sergeant, retired and Delta Force Operator Dale Comstock took issue with the demand. He said, It affects morale and combat readiness on many levels. At the end of the day, war fighting is about one thing, killing people. It's about bringing home our guys alive. It's not about being sensitive to a transgender. This isn't corporate America, this is the military. You can't just put some policy in place because you want people to feel equal. Most guys who joined the military, especially Special Operations Forces, were the boys who had dirt clawed fights on the playground, wrestled and fist fought, stole each other's girlfriends, and pledged allegiance to the flag. And that same spirit and apex predator mindset goes with us into the military. Adding to the conversation U.S. Army Captain James Hassan, retired, joined Tucker Carlson on July 13, 2017. Beginning the conversation, Tucker basically asked him does the transgender policy provide a more effective fighting force? Hassan answered. No it doesn't for three reasons, one, privacy concerns, two, it validates lack of preparation, and, three, it undermines readiness by removing it from our military standards. Tucker also asked. Is anyone making an argument that this policy will make a more effective fighting force and win more wars? Hassan answered no, and his remarks basically repeated that of Sergeant Comstock. The transgender policy prioritizes feelings over combat readiness. The military transgender policy is dangerously misguided. Adding to the privacy concerns, a new Army training manual now says. Female soldiers must give dignity and respect the transsexual men who join them in their shared shower rooms. Considering the movie title, Sense and Sensibility, this situation brings to mind how little of both this policy makes. We dare now say WTF. Does anyone in their right mind believe that this cockeyed policy will make our military forces more effective and much more able to fight and win wars? and that it won't affect military readiness? Stay tuned. This issue is not yet over. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe Breaking News 365 channel. Goodbye and see you again.